بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and welcome to a new lecture in broad course today's lecture will be about figurative of speech and in this video we will discuss some types of figurative of speech and apply it to Frankenstein novel Let's start by foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is the presentation of material in such a way that the reader is prepared for what is to come later in the work. In Arabic, we can say it's nadir. And if you remember, we said that the opposite of foreshadowing is flashback. Foreshadowing when we suspect something that will happen in the future when and the writer here gives us some hints from where we can suspect on the other hand flashback when we go back to the past remembering like past events and happenings so let's discuss this example in chapter or from chapter 23 the wind which had fallen in the south now rose with a great violence in the west the moon had reached her summit in the heavens and was and was beginning to descend till the end of what of this of the uh, quotation here the moon is used as a foreshadowing for the appearance of the minister and we can judge this because every time the moon appears the creator is about to appear so it's quite crucial to realize that perhaps the moon represents darkness as does the creator symbol which is something visible that by association or convention represents something else that is invisible. Some critics say that moon could be a symbol of the minister because it represents darkness. Simile. Simile is a figure of speech that expresses a resemblance between things of different kinds, usually formed with like or as. For example, let's read this quotation for, uh, from chapter 4. No one can conceive the variety of feelings which bore me onwards like a hurricane like a hurricane now we will discuss later metaphor and we will find that the difference is that simile use like or as here again the variety is drawn as a hurricane using like so mary shelley manages to convert two aspects in order to illustrate her point shelley manages to re to relate monotonously motivating feelings to a hurricane. Metaphor is a figure of speech in which an expression is used to refer to something that, is, that does not literally denote in order to suggest similarity. Let's discuss this example from chapter 4. Life and death appear to me ideal bounds which I should first a brick throw and power a torrent of light into our dark world a new species would bless me as its creator and source now here is a Frankenstein is a narrator and let's discuss this quotation Without using like or as, Mary Shelley manages to suggest that life and death are essentially ideal bounds. 
She elaborates and says that birth is something to break through. Birth is something to break through. If she uses life and death appear to me as ideal bounds or like ideal bounds, then we will have not metaphor but a simile. Personification, which is a figure of speech in which an object or animal is giving human feelings, thoughts, or attitudes. For example, in chapter 4, dedicated myself and the moon gazed. Here, is the moon really gaze or can he really gaze? The aspect of the moon gazing truly represents personification because it's virtually impossible for the inanimate object of the moon to do so. So Mary Shelley gave the moon human-like attributes. Hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech that uses exaggeration to express a strong emotion, make a point, or evoke a humor. It's like mubalagha. Fiendish rage animated him as he said this. His face was wrinkled into contortions, too horrible for human eyes to behold. But presently the, he calmed himself and proceeded. Now what does contortions mean? Contortions means iltiwaat. Yani, wajhu asbah mujahad bil iltiwaat. Now there is a hyperbole, and if you know in al-mubalagh and disputation, this expert truly helps to exemplify the overly sarcastic tone that Mary Shelley develops. The description of the contortions help to provide for the bitterly sarcastic tone or mood. Now the opposite of hyperbole is understatement, and. It is a deliberate minimizing done to provide emphasis or humor, like to make things easier, easier than it should be. يعني التقليل أو عكس المغالاة أو المبالغة في الأشياء. Allusion. Allusion means a reference to something literally. يعني in literature. Mythological or historical that the author assumes the reader will recognize. Even the like the reference could be for religious references. For example, in this quotation uh, between um, Frankenstein talking to Victor uh, to uh, the monster, devil, he said to him, devil. I exclaimed, do you dare approach me when they confront uh, with each other? And don't you fear the fierce vinegans of my arm wrecked on your miserable head? Now, the use of word devil is an illusion because Mary Shelley is, refer is referencing to Paradise Lost. This novel focuses on Satan the devil to which the creature is referred to. So again, it's like giving the reader a hint that there could be a connection between the monster and the devil in Paradise Lost uh, novel. Monologue. Monologue is a long utterance by one person, especially on that prevents others from participating in the conversation. It's like Munaja Fardiya. Here, the minister is speaking. I expected this reception, said the demon. All men hate the rich. How then must I be hated? You are miserable beyond all living things. Yet you, my creator, detest and spur me, thy creator to whom thou art bound by ties only. 
this level, etc. till the end of the monologue. This monologue presented by the creator helps the reader to fully evaluate his thoughts towards his, the, his situation because the narrator here is not an omniscient narrator so we can make use of this monologue to understand what is inside the characters about his feelings, thoughts, etc. So this provides to be quite beneficial because we as readers cannot get into his head so we must analyze and read closely to the things he says to realize his state of mind. This is Now let's talk about uh, this slide is about like um, uh, allusion when we talked about Satan and evil uh, when Mary Shelley referenced to Paradise Lost focuses on Satan the devil to which the creature is referred to now let's have another figurative of speech which is imagery imagery from the word image surah the use of language to evoke a picture or a concrete sensation of a person thing place or experience if you remember it's the closest definition for showing like to depict a picture which is vivid to the reader that he can or which is a lively picture that he can see in details so here we can find imagery or too many images in this quotation the wind which had hither to carry us along with amazing rapidity and even there's like a metaphor here as if the wind is a person who can carry right here uh, the wind carried us along with amazing rapidity sank at sunset to a light breeze the soft air just ruffled the water and caused a pleasant motion among the trees till the end of the quotation this scene helps to exemplify much imagery therefore using the tone of imagination the descriptive words such as rapidity ruffled wafted etc help to further support the scene being created overall the imagery provided is quite beneficial when creating a scene full of imaginary entities Slang, slang which is common, casual, conversational language that is inappropriate in formal speaking or writing. Slang often serves to define social groups by virtue of being a private, short language not understood by outsiders. So here, A, sir, free enough for honest folks, Mr. Kerwin. The word or the slang word A is often used during the last few centuries and is still used in European states. This word is used to represent the word yes. Now let's talk about tone. Tone is the author's attitude toward his subject let's see this example thus spoke my prophetic soul as turned by remorse horror and despair i beheld those i loved spend vain sorrow upon the graves of william and justin the first hapless victims to my unhallowed arts now this quote ex exemplifies a quiet, dark and gloomy tone due to the words that obtain negative connotations such as remorse, horror, despair, vain, sorrow, graves, hapless, unhallowed, etc. These mentioned words are quite significant to the tone because they in themselves provide for a gloomy choice of diction. So usually from the word choices we can define the tone 
of the writer. If, for example, it is positive, to show happiness, satisfaction, etc., or negative, like to show uh, gothic elements, uh, to show fear, death, murder, etc. Let's discuss another quotation. Vivid flashes of lightning dazzled my eyes, illuminating the lake, making it appear like a vast sheet of fire. The way the lake is portrayed mimics the tone of the story. For example, the lake is peaceful when Victor is a juvenile, but when Victor is stressed, and knowledgeably inclined after hearing of William's murder and is returning home in chapter 7, nature reflects his mood. This could be an exam question, like how nature is connected to human and more specifically to Frankenstein in the, like in the events of the novel. Pun. Pun a play on words that often has a comic effect associated with blatant cleverness. For example, his gentleness was never tinged by a dogmatism, and his instructions were given with an air of frankness and good nature that punished everyday idea of what pedantry. Here, this excerpt is known for its pun. The puniness of this is that Mary Shelley describes the sitting as having an air of frankness here. Air of frankness. Hence, Victor Frankenstein being present. Now we will discuss some examples of symbols of light and fire in the novel light in the novel symbolizes enlightenment in frankenstein walton expects to find the secrets of the universe unveiled in the north pole which he describes as a country of eternal light light also accompanies nearly all of the victors Ephanis, when he first discovers natural philosophy, says, A new light seemed to down up my mind. When he discovers the secret to create, of creating life, he describes his feelings as if a sudden light broke in upon me. He envisions powering a torrent of light into our dark world through the creation of a new species. Yet light that's too bright is also blinding, and both Victor and Walton fail to see or, or consider the dangerous consequences of their quests for alignment. Here is another quotation with light. Now let's talk about fire. If you remember, the complete title of Shelley's novel is Frankenstein or Modern Prometheus. Prometheus was the titan who in Greek mythology gave the knowledge of fire to humanity and then suffered severe punishment at the hands of the gods for his generous actions. We can say that Prometheus could be a symbol for Victor since there is a lot of similarities between them both like seeks to have God's ability okay they overstep the ability of God in Frankenstein Victor attempts to give the gift of secret of life to humanity, but ends up suffering grave punishment as a result. 
The minister he creates destroys his family and his life. Fire appears throughout the novel as a dangerous force used for sustenance as when the minister discovers fire and punishment as when the minister describes demons suffering in the lake of fire in the hell.